I hope you're doing well. Just wanted to come to you again with some daily bread today. Uh, it's been a few days. Uh, I haven't been able to upload anything. And I just uh, earnestly ask for your prayers that, that uh, God would continue to put the passion and desire in my heart to do these lives. And uh, you know, I can be more consistent. Because I know some people are, are being blessed by this. Um, so thank you for your prayers in advance. But let's jump right into it. I'm I'm going to be reading out of Joel chapter one today, and today's message is a little more, a little more hard, a little more um, eye-opening, uh, thought-provoking of a message. And I just, I just feel in my heart and my spirit right now that we need a stern word, uh, we need a, a shaking and awakening in the church. And so this message is, is hopefully going to uh, help, help that to start to develop in your heart if it hasn't already been developing. But we're reading out of Joel chapter 1, and uh, I'll just start in verse 13. And I would encourage you to read the whole chapter to get the context of everything. Um, but we're going to start in 13. It says, Put on sackcloth and lament, O priests. Wail, O ministers of the altar. Go in, pass, pass the night in sackcloth, O ministers of my God. Bring grain offerings and drink offering. Oh, because grain offering and drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. Consecrate a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is near and as destruction from the Almighty it comes. Okay, and then it goes on and on about some of the things that are happening, you know, the loss of... of of their abundance and uh, you know the, just the abundance of their crops their their cattle and everything just diminishing and deteriorating and before this particular portion of scripture in 13 and 14 it mentions about how the canker worm and the caterpillar and the and uh, <coughs> another type of worm I can't remember off the top of my head what it is um, is just eating all of their all their their produce okay now remember this is back in the old days the old testament uh, they didn't have all the technology that we have now and all of the uh, industry that we have now. It, everything was very simple, you know. A lot of people were farmers and they mainly depended on farming, you know, their their farms and stuff to survive and um, their cattle and everything. So if you had a lot of cattle, if you had a lot of um, pro crops, you know, you were and you had abundant crops, then you were wealthy, you know, you had a lot of wealth. Um, so those things were deteriorating, those things were diminishing, and there was a famine of sorts upon the land. And it doesn't go you know, into detail as to why this was happening, but we know from, from past um, scriptures and past historical documents that we have that when bad things are happening to the people of God, it's usually because there are there is some types of sin prevailing in the, in the the land, so they have succumbed to sin. They have been defiled by sin, and so once once sin enters into the picture, you know, judgment comes eventually, and and sorrow and disease and all of this comes as a result of sin. Ever since the beginning, since Adam and Eve, that's that's been the problem: death, destruction, condemnation, separation from God, sorrow, grief, uh, shame guilt all of this comes as a result of sin so uh, whenever we see things coming against the people of God usually there's some kind of sin involved okay so we don't again we don't know the context exactly why they were being afflicted this way but this was happening and the Bible through Joel the prophet Joel the Lord is is calling them to to put on sackcloth and lament it says now in the old days what they would do is they would literally put on like a burlap sack you know, very coarse, uh, unpleasurable clothing. It wasn't meant to be eloquent. It wasn't meant to feel comfortable. It was just a humbling, a humbling of oneself. And they would just sit in that thing and sometimes they would put ashes on their head just to kind of shame. It's almost like you're shaming yourself. You're, you're just sitting there full of ashes and full of this coarse, hard, uh, uncomfortable sackcloth and 
You're just praying. You're crying out to God. You're saying, Lord, have mercy. Forgive our nation. Forgive the people. Forgive your people. You know, we have sinned. And, and a lot of times the prophets would pray like that. They would take ownership as well. <clears throat> they would associate themselves with the, with the people of God. They would say, we have sinned. And even though they, they necessarily weren't the ones that were actually doing all the sinning, they would take ownership of their people and they would take that burden upon themselves and say, we have sinned, Lord. We have sinned. Forgive us. Have mercy on us. You know, in, these, in this sackcloth and ashes and prayer and lamenting. So the Bible is calling this the people of Israel here, the children of God here, to, to humble themselves and to pray and to lament over um, their country, over their nation, that God would find favor, that God would have mercy, that God would turn His, His judgment away, that God's blessings and favor would come again upon them. And then it says that to consecrate a fast. Okay, now for those, those of you that don't know what a fast is, a fast is denying yourself of food and or water. Okay, so you're denying yourself of food and or water is another way of humbling yourself so that you can just really focus in on prayer and focus in on seeking God and it's again it's a humbling of yourself. God responds to humiliate to humbling ourselves. We uh, I don't want to say humiliate but we surrender and just Gravel before him like you know like we are acknowledging that we are nothing we are nothing besides him without him we are nothing and it's true it's not I know nowadays there's a lot of teachings around that that we hear that say that you you know you got to consider yourself to be you know powerful and you got to think of yourself as uh, always in control you know you they give you all kinds of affirmations and you say that I am powerful I am strong I am uh, you know, I, I cannot fail, I will overcome, and you just say all these things um, to acknowledge that you, you know, to, or to convince yourself that you are in control, and that everything is going to be alright, and that you're going to do whatever you need to do, there's nothing that can stop you. Well, in circumstances like, like we're reading about here in the Bible, there uh, there's times where we have to humble ourselves and recognize that we are nothing, in, you know, without God, we are nothing. We are hopeless. We are helpless. We are lost. We don't even exist. We can't move. We can't breathe. We can't do anything without God giving us the ability. You know, you guys realize that that we can't even breathe without Him giving us breath, without the air that He created, without the lungs that He created. You know, without energy that our body uses to move, we can't do anything. Right, And so there's this time where we need to really just acknowledge how hopeless we are without God. Especially when we are in a situation where we see the judgment of God coming down upon our nation, or upon our family, or upon our life, or, or something of that nature. You know, a lot of things have been happening in our country. COVID was one of them. We had fires. We had, um, you know, there was a lot of division, a lot of fighting, infighting. Uh, there's political unrest. So much evil is prevailing. There's sicknesses. There's diseases. There's suicide. Suicidal rates are going higher. Um, you know, there's confusion being taught as truth. Our children are being brainwashed to believe that there's certain lifestyles that we can live uh, that are. They're saying that they're right when they're not. The Bible says they're not right. There's a way that God has designed us to function. And so there's just a lot of a lot of evil happening, a lot of fornication, people sleeping around left and right, uh, people getting married and divorcing left and right. This is something that God hates. He hates divorce. People are selfish. They're greedy. They are, you know, they devour one another. They step on one another to get to advance in life. You know, and you could go on and on. Abortions, millions and millions of babies are being killed because they're not convenient. You know, this, this nation is, is allowing all of this to happen and it's not doing anything significant to stop it. As a matter of fact, our, gov our very own government is supporting some of these things and coming behind some of these things. And again, you know, when a government, a leadership is in support of wickedness and of evil, that brings 
judgment upon a nation. So our nation has been judged. I think, I believe COVID was a judgment of God to awaken our nation, to awaken the church even, because the church has become so comfortable that they're just, they're, they're just living life. They're just living la vida loca, you know, for lack of a better word. They're just enjoying themselves, enjoying the fruit of their labors and ignoring all of the, the sin that is prevailing, all of the confusion that is prevailing and being taught they're, meanwhile, their children are growing up being taught false teachings and false beliefs. And they're just comfortable. They're just hanging out, going on vacations, working, buying, selling, getting married, having parties. And meanwhile, our nation is crumbling, is falling apart, is becoming more and more perverse and more wicked and more just, just lost. <coughs> Which is going to bring more judgment. You guys, I know this is a hard message. You know, I know this is a hard message, but sometimes we need to, to wait, you know, open our eyes and see the reality of our situation. We can't just sit idle and just look around and say, oh, it's, everything's going to be fine. It'll be all right. And do nothing about it. You know, God has called us Christians to stand up and to be, uh, to be, um, you know, a watchman on the wall. To be a voice crying out in the wilderness like, like, like the John the Baptist, repent. Prepare you the ways of the Lord. Make your path straight. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, God has called every Christian to be a testimony. To be a light. What does a light do? A light reveals truth. It reveals the reality of a situation. So we are called to reveal the truth of God's word. And it's going to make people uncomfortable. It's going to make people feel uh, offended even. You know, I'm not saying that we have to be uh, disrespectful. Or we have to be evil in, in the way that we present the message, or we have to be condescending or looking down on we you know look down on people. I'm not saying we have to do that. Okay, but we do still need to share the truth in love and with much prayer and with much patience continue to share the truth until we die. Until we die. You know, it's our it's our responsibility. Okay, and part of uh, uh, humbling ourselves when we see just destruction, when we see chaos, when we see confusion, when we see, you know, God's judgment coming upon our nation. You know, we see it around the world as well. In Ukraine and Russia, there's a lot of turmoil over there right now. We see uh, Iran, and we've had issues with Iran over the past, and they, you know, continue to uh, work towards their goal of annihilating Israel. And we know that's not going to happen. The Bible will not allow that. The Bible says that will not happen. So, you know, God, Jesus is going to return before that happens. China is, you know, getting stronger and stronger, starting to uh, flex their, their military muscle, their, their technological muscles, and, you know, technological warfare and all of these things. And their, their tentacles are reaching out into all different parts of the earth, and they're getting more and more powerful, more and more dispersed in their uh, influence and, and, and a power. You know, and they're a communist country that doesn't, doesn't, that has a lot of restrictions, that has a lot of, that doesn't really allow Christianity to prosper. People are being persecuted for their faith in some of these countries, Iran and, and, and Russia, and, well, I'm not sure about Russia, but China, um, you know, Africa, some of these countries are persecuting Christians for their faith. <clears throat> and so, you know, again, the wrath of God, the judgment of God. God allows these uh, tragedies to happen, not because he, he loves to punish the wicked. The Bible says he does not take pleasure in punishing the wicked. But he needs to do it to wake people up. Otherwise, it would just get worse and worse. And so in our country in particular, I, I see a lot of things um, that are happening. And it just, it just inside of me, I just want to... I want I want to do something about it, and you know this is what God has put in my heart this morning. That we need to get serious in our walk with the Lord. We need to get serious in our consecration. We need to really learn how to pray, and it's time to grow past the cute little prayers that we said when we were babies in Christ. Uh, you know, thank you Jesus for my food, and you know, thank you Lord for this day. You know, and help me have a good night rest, and you know, those are fine. Those are fine. You know cute little prayers and there's nothing wrong with those but those prayers aren't going to destroy strongholds those prayers are not going to save your your lost ones 
your loved ones. They're, they're not going to set your children free from a drug addiction, from pornography, from uh, you know LGBTQ confusion. Those kind of prayers are not going to make the devils tremble and flee. Okay, we got to get serious. We got to learn how to truly pray as warriors. We got to be become spiritual warriors, spiritual snipers in the kingdom of God, so that uh, God can begin to work and flow through us in powerful and even supernatural ways for His glory, not for our glory, for our ministry, and so that we can make money and 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 um, market you know market it, market these things for our own pleasure. No, for the for the will of God, for His kingdom to prosper, for souls to be saved. For the message, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to get out there in a, in a greater way all over the world. We have that opportunity. We have the, the uh, resources. Uh, there's, there's never been a time like this where we have so much opportunity, so much resources, so many things that we can do and use to get the word of God out there, to proliferate the gospel of Jesus <clears throat> all over the world from the, from the very uh, room of your house like I'm doing right now, this message can potentially get out all over the world through social media, through the internet, and, and various, various platforms of technology, Zoom and, and, and the like. There's so much opportunity, brothers and sisters, but we, we, we need, like Jesus said, the laborers are few. The laborers are few. Not, no, not, not a lot of people are willing to put in any effort not a lot of people are willing to make the sacrifices that are necessary to, to do what, what we have to do to get the message out there. To prepare ourselves physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, you know, to be able to get the message out there. there there's a process that we have to go through. There's a refining process. There, there's a purification process that God takes us through that we're, to where He can flow through us more powerfully and more fluid, like it just comes through more um, fluidly, if that's a word, you know, and, and not a lot of people are willing to go through the process. They're just comfortable with their uh, casual Christianity, you know, just going to church and, and checking in the time card, putting some money in the plate, hearing a motivational speech, um, you know, getting excited over some worship songs and, and even dancing around a little bit, but then they go back home to their same old lives, or to, you know. They're, they're um, the rat race, working, buying, selling, and and meanwhile our com our country is getting more and more lost and more confused and more divided and more bound and more afflicted by uh, sicknesses and and uh, chaos and tragedies and different things that sin is bringing into the into our nation. You know, it's time to wake up, brothers and sisters. This is a cry. This is a cry to those true followers of Jesus Christ, true disciples that really want to make a difference in the world. And they're tired of just standing by and seeing the devil destroy and wreak havoc in our country, in our families, in our marriages, in our children, in our nation, in our world. We need people to get tired of that. There's got to be a righteous anger that needs to bubble up inside of us to where we're going to do what it takes. We're willing to put in the work. We're willing to, to make the sacrifices to grow in our ministry, and our calling, in our testimonies, in, in the light that God has given us to grow in intensity. That light would shine more brightly in our communities, in our environments. I just hope somebody is receiving this. And please share this. Please share this message in, in, on Facebook and wherever else you want to share it. Because we need, we need the army of the Lord to rise up. We need true soldiers to rise up. It's time to stop playing Christianity games. It's time to stop sitting idle on the pews in the church. It's time to make a difference, brothers and sisters. And part of this is going back to our scripture. The, the Bible calls the people of Israel to fast, to humble themselves in the presence of God deny themselves food and even drink and just pray and lament over our nation, cry over our nation, ask the Lord, forgive our nation, Lord, forgive us, Lord, let your wrath, take your wrath away, you know, keep your wrath back, don't pour out your wrath just yet, 
We know the Bible says that the wrath of God is going to pour out in a, in a, in a, a terrible way, in an astonishing, awesome way. It's going to pour out and much destruction is coming. And, you know, we can still delay that a little bit. There's still, there's still hope for this nation. You know, but we gotta we gotta cry out for our nation. We gotta lament. We gotta get humble ourselves and and pray and fast and seek the Lord for forgiveness. Pray against the strongholds that the enemy has established against the spiritual strongholds, against the demonic influences, the principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness and wickedness in high places, like the prince of the air himself, the devil. <coughs> we gotta pray against all of these things in the name of Jesus and fight. For what we believe in fight for the truth and god will hear god will hear he will hear if you're struggling in your marriage if your children are are, are backsliding or are getting into gangs and drugs and promiscuity be, becoming very promiscuous or whatever very rebellious disobedient you got to get serious about fasting for them about interceding for them about standing in the gap don't let the devil just destroy their life. Don't let them, don't just sit back and watch them uh, go down the path of destruction and do nothing about it. I mean, you can yell at them all you want. You can beat them all you want. You can, uh, you know, cuss them out or whatever. That's not really going to solve the problem. You're just going to make it worse. We got to fight where the battle is really being fought. That's in the spiritual realm. The Bible says that our, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, wickedness in high places. You are fighting a spiritual battle against spiritual entities. And you're not going to defeat them with carnal uh, efforts. You need to get serious in prayer. We need to get serious in fasting and prayer. We need to get serious in reading the Word of God and declaring it over our life, over our children, over our marriage. Those of you that are on the brink of divorce, don't sit back and watch the devil destroy your marriage and your family and your children's lives. All of the things that are going to happen as a result of that divorce, your kids will be affected dramatically. They'll never be the same. They'll, they'll struggle. There's going to be a struggle that they're going to have to overcome. And sometimes they will not overcome. They'll fall into all kinds of evil and things that they shouldn't be doing because they're trying to cope with the hurt and the pain. Don't, don't, don't allow the devil to run your family through all that mess. Fight for your marriage. Fight for your children. Fight for your family and friends. Your cousins and your aunts, your grandmas and grandpas, all your family, your friends, your neighbors, co-workers, fight for your nation. Let's go to war, brothers and sisters. We need to unite together in these last days and not just let the devil have his way. Is anybody listening? I hope somebody is getting this message. I hope somebody is being convicted. And I hope somebody will begin to unite with me in prayer and in fasting. And begin to walk in the authority that God has preordained for each and every one of His children. He wants us to walk in power. That's why He gives us His Holy Spirit. So we can have power and authority to declare the will of God. To walk in truth. To preach the gospel. To cast away devils and demons. To break strongholds of the enemy. To heal the sick and raise the dead. That's what God wants to do. He wants to see His church having victory over the, over the devil and His dominion. The Bible says that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. How many believe that? How many really believe the Bible, believe the words of the Lord? If you believe it, then, then shout Amen and let's get to work. Let's begin the process that God's going to take us through so that we can be pure in heart, holy and undefiled in His presence. And that when He begins to do us with more and more power and authority and, and wisdom and revelation, that we will not be consumed in pride. We will not be destroyed by our lusts, by the power that the that 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 brings attention and it brings even the potential of gain, wealth. People will be willing to pay, or there's a temptation to use that authority, that that supernatural power to get money, to get wealth, to get influence. <coughs> we don't want to be consumed with that. And believe me, don't think that you're too you know you're too strong that nothing could ever happen to you and you never fall. It's very powerful men of God that have been that were dedicated, that were prayer warriors, that were, you know, just consecrated, very, very powerful men of God have fallen because they took their eyes off of Jesus little by little. It didn't happen overnight. They gradually deviated away from God. They got distracted. They got caught up in all of the, you know, all of the day-to-day -day activities and their relationship with God diminished little by little. 
So we can't take, we can't afford to take breaks. We can't afford to take for granted, you know, our each each and every day God gives us. The Bible says, uh, you know, we gotta redeem the time, redeem the time that God gives you. Use it wisely. Invest wisely. Stop wasting so much time. We gotta stop wasting so much time on on activities that are unfruitful or worse they are perverting our mind little by little they're introducing witchcraft sorcery lusts you know we shouldn't be watching and entertaining ourselves with sex violence drugs uh, witchcraft sorcery uh, you know demonic activity you know all this stuff is being promoted in our media left and right and and too many Christians are sitting in front of that screen indulging in this activity and thinking oh it's no big deal I'm not really doing it I'm just watching it but you don't realize that little by little it, it a little leaven leavens the whole lump you give it enough time you're gonna begin to become callous to some of these things and and be become tempted and you will fall just give it enough time you will fall if you continue to feed yourself evil. The Bible says be careful what you watch, whatever comes into your mind's eye, into the light. It says don't let the light of your eye be dark. Don't watch evil things. Don't listen to evil things. It doesn't matter how much it pleasures you or makes you feel good. Watching horror movies, you know, people like to get excited and adrenaline rush. That's not good for your for your mind. It's not good for your spirit. Watching all that evil, that's that's evil. That's wickedness. Don't entertain yourself with filth, with evil. You're, you're basically destroying your mind, yourself, little by little. That's the devil's plan. He's very patient, methodical. And he knows exactly how to get you. Don't, don't be ignorant of his devices, of his traps and snares. <coughs> Amen. So, again, I know this message is a hard one. And I, you know, I just... Pray that you would receive it. The way that I'm coming across is not judgmental. It's not because uh, I think I'm better than anybody else. I am battling with all the same things you guys are. I'm just as weak as the next person. And I need to pray every day. I need to fast, uh, you know, a day a week at least or, or whatever God puts on my heart. I need to read the Bible constantly, daily. Because I need reminder. I need to keep my mind focused on the right things. I need to keep my heart in the right place. It's very easy for us to get off track and get all consumed in uh, the emotions and the uh, you know the the activities of life that are just guiding us in the wrong direction. It's very easy. It's very easy. Don't take it for granted. So uh, I'm going to stop there. I think I've hammered that nail hard enough for now, but. Um, Please take that to heart and please join with me in prayer. Join with me in fasting. Develop a prayer life. Develop a fasting uh, once a week. Try to fast once a week. Just don't give yourself an option. You know, the problem is we give ourselves too many options. Just say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. My children need me. My wife needs me. My family needs me. This nation needs my country, my city, my state, my church, my, you know, my family, friends. They need me. I've got to fast for them. I've got to pray for them. And just make it, it's just, there's no, there's no option not to do it. This day, this time, I'm going to pray. This time in the morning, I'm going to pray. This is my prayer time. I don't care what else is happening, unless it's an emergency where I can't avoid it. But I'm going to pray this time every day in the morning. And I'm going to read the Bible this time every day in the morning for this amount of minutes. And I'm going to do that consistently until I can do a little bit more. <clears throat> I'm going to fast once a week from this time to this time. And I'm going to do that. I don't care. I'm not going to give myself an option because guess what? Your body's going to want to eat. Obviously, you're going to feel hungry. And you're going to be like, oh, I don't want to finish this. Okay, I'll just I'll stop right now. So you got to, in your mind, you got to say, no, I'm not giving myself that option. I'm not going to, I'm not going to avoid it. I'm not going to, I don't care how bad I feel. I don't care how much my stomach is groaning. I'm not going to die. No, you're not going to die, believe me. Unless you're severely diabetic or you have a severe uh, health issue. You're not going to die from denying yourself one day of food and water. Okay? And if you can't do it without water, then just do water. That's still a fast, you know, without food. <clears throat> and of course, when you're fasting, don't, don't be watching movies and social media and um, listening to worldly music and 
um, any of that. You know, we don't want to put any anything in our mind that is of the distraction or is of the enemy. On those days of fasting, we just want to be praying. We want to be. I mean, you have to work, obviously, but you want to be praying in your free time. Uh, you want to be reading the Bible. You want to be listening to godly music, Christian godly music. Um, you know, you want to keep yourself in environments where you're not going to be bombarded with too much wickedness or evil or sin, right? Because you're really trying to focus in on God in those times of fasting. You're really trying to be spiritually minded and really hear the voice of God in those times of fasting. So just, you know, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, if you will do this, God is going to begin to open doors in your life. <clears throat> He's going to begin to reveal things to you, mysteries of His Word. The world around you is going to become alive. You're going to see the world with spiritual eyes. It's just interesting how that happens, that transformation your heart begins to desire things that are more godly and you begin to hate evil evil things, things that are sinful and wicked. You become convicted about it and you, you don't feel comfortable doing those things anymore. You begin to start wanting to push those things out of your life. God will begin that purification process, but you've got to take the steps. You've got to take action. God's not going to force you to do it. So I want to encourage you to do that. And if you need help or guidance or have questions or want a prayer about that, uh, please reach out to me. We're here to help. If you need prayer for healing, deliverance, demonic attacks, and on your family, you, <clears throat> your home, or um, if you'd like to be baptized in Jesus' name, you know, Bible tells Acts two thirty eight when we repent of our sins and we want to follow Jesus to be baptized. So you need to be baptized in Jesus' name as an adult, knowing what you're doing. If you're baptized as a child, you're not. You know, there's nothing, not necessarily anything wrong with that, but you weren't able to make that commitment. You were a child. So as an adult, you got to be able to make the commitment to Jesus, to accept Him as your Lord and Savior, <clears throat> and to follow Him, and to make that covenant with Him that He is going to be, uh, you know, your Lord, and that you're going to be faithful to Him, kind of like when you get married, you know. So baptism is like that, and if you haven't been baptized, you've got nothing to lose by being baptized. Give us a call. We'd love to help you. Be buried in a watery grave. So you go all the way underneath water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, because the name is what has the power. And the Bible says that you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Your sins will be remitted. You'll be forgiven. All of your past sins, you don't have to carry that burden anymore. You can be free from that. So if you want to do that, and you're serious about serving Jesus, and you're tired of playing games, you're tired of playing around with the world, you're tired of all the disappointment, you're tired of all the, the superficiality of it, all the false hopes, all the fear, the rejection, and the, the hurt, the pain, the, the just the emptiness of it all, and you want to fill that hole in your heart, that void, then let's, let's get together. I can help you to get baptized. I can help you to understand what you need to do to become a true uh, believer of Christ and to receive the Holy Spirit and to begin to walk in love, truth, to have hope, to have joy, to have peace. <clears throat> we can help you. We're here to help. So just give us a call, 559-909-3117. Uh, if you need the Holy Spirit, haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit yet, we'd love to pray for you that God would fill you with His Holy Spirit, give you your prayer language, and begin to uh, develop... Um, you know, the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit in your life and the ministries that He has for you as well. Because each and every one of us have ministries that God wants to use us in. So we'd love to unite with you. Just give us a call. Um, again, this third, today, actually, we're going out to serve the homeless at 5 p.m. If anybody would love to help, we would appreciate it. Uh, if you want to donate anything, we'd appreciate it. Finances, water, clothing, shoes, food, whatever you can give that, that someone would need out there. You know, portable toilets, Bibles. <clears throat> We've had several people ask for Bibles. So if you want to uh, donate some Bibles, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, just give us a call, 559-909-909-3117. So um, thank you all once again. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this message, this hard message, but yet a message that we need to hear. We need to hear, Lord, that we, we need to repent of our sins as a nation. We need to turn to you as a nation, and we need to, as a church, we need to rise up. We need to, to put on the, the armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, and the shield of faith, and prepare our feet with the gospel of peace. We need to get ready, God, to go to war for our country, our families, our friends, our nation, our world, our cities, our states. We need to go to war, God. It's time that the Christians wake up. It's time that the true Christians stand up. <clears throat> and advance against the, the kingdoms of darkness. 
and to take back ten, uh, territory that has been stolen by the enemy as you give us the strength, as you give us the anointing, as you give us the power. Lord, we pray that you would help us, God, that you would equip us with the weapons of our warfare, that you would give us faith, increase our faith, Lord, so that we would not doubt your ability, we would not doubt your presence, we would not doubt your power and your authority to influence and to change and to interact with our lives, that you can help us, that you can turn things around completely, that you can make all things new, that you can heal, mend and restore all those things that have been broken in our lives. We thank you, God, for this faith. I pray faith would fall upon my brothers and sisters that are hearing and praying with me. I pray that you would increase their faith right now and remove all doubt, remove all double-mindedness, remove all, Lord, confusion right now, God, and help them to come to a true knowledge of the truth, a true relationship, an intimacy, with, an intimate relationship with you, O oh God. Break those strongholds, remove those blindfolds from their eyes and show them the truth. Reveal yourself, God, to them in a powerful and intimate way that they would not know, that they would not be, uh, um, they would know without a shadow of a doubt that you are God, that you are real, hallelujah, that you are there, that you love them, and that you will help them through their trials and their struggles and tribulations, and that you will use them for your glory and honor and raise them up to be the soldiers and the warriors that you have called them and created them and preordained them to be. I thank you, Father, for doing this. I thank you for deliverance in my friends' lives. Set them free from bondage, O oh God, from spiritual attacks, from spiritual uh, um, strongholds in their life. Break them free from curses, generational curses and, and, and defilement in their bloodline. Cleanse them, Lord, by the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Set them free right now. Purify their temple. Purify their homes, Lord. Let your angels encamp around them and protect them and their families and their children and their brothers and sisters in Christ. And we pray, Lord, for your kingdom all over the world. Our brothers and sisters in every part of the earth, where they're at, you know, in Ukraine even, especially in different countries where they're, they're suffering persecution, Lord, protect them, uh, uh, increase their faith, Lord, provide for them, help them, Lord, even if they are martyred, Lord, martyred, not to give up, not to deny Jesus Christ, but to stay to stay true to the very end, so that they can re, re, reap that eternal reward. It'll be worth it all, Lord, when it's all said and done. And we stand before you in your glory, and we're welcomed into your presence. And hear those special words, those wonderful words, well done, good and faithful servant. So God help us, give us strength to keep pressing forward. Let us not get weary, let us not get distracted, but continue to pursue your presence, pursue your, your glory, pursue your, your will in our lives, O oh God. We thank you for doing this, Lord, and we just trust you be with us today. And prosper and bless everything that we do, our words, our actions, our deeds. Prosper and bless it, Lord, uh, according to your perfect will, so that we'd have abundance and we can invest wisely in those ministries and those uh, people that you have put in our path. So we pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Share this message, please, and continue to pr pray for this ministry, uh, word prayer, fasting ministries, and uh, Lord willing, we will see you again tomorrow with some more daily bread.